Uh, hi there, and welcome to the ATS podcast with me, Will Brown, and John Salisbury, where we break down chunks of health and fitness information into bite-sized pieces, remove a bunch of the noise, and just leave what's relevant. Uh, today we are on episode number 50, uh, and our topic today is home gym equipment on a budget. Um, I Literally, as you were in into this, I was just thinking, don't do what we did. I think we spent like 30 grand on home gym equipment. That is essentially what it's cost us now. Probably more. Well, I mean, we do also own a gym. Like a no, I know, but it, like a it started on getting silly. <laughs> it started with home gym equipment on a budget. <laughs> it's, it's now where we are. Now. I don't know if we were specifically on a budget. I think we. Li- I, I think if I recall, we bought a rack, bar, plates, and a bench, and yeah. I think it worked out to about the same as a yearly gym membership, which we were planning on buying anyway, but we fell out with the administration of the facility we were currently training in yeah and we were like well if we use it for the year it's cheaper than going to the gym anyway and yeah the gym that we went to didn't have a, a squat rack this is back in the oldy times yeah circa 2009 10 probably 1920 was that how old i was yeah I can't remember. 12 years ago. 13 years ago. So yeah. Yeah, about then. 2010. Um, so yeah, the we started with a rack uh, plates bar, which we almost immediately bent, if I recall. And, yeah. a, and a bench. Um, super easy answer. If you're... Depends if you are budget concerned or not. Super easy budget concerning stuff is you don't need anything calisthenics will do you quite a long way uh yeah you can make a point of making them extremely challenging again if you have any interest in that looking up people like matt herrera and stuff all those like super ripped calisthenics dudes on instagram that or not youtube that all live out in la and have like neck tattoos and shit um weirdly edinburgh specifically i've seen a lot more of these little bits of kind of like outdoor equipment that are kicking about. I don't know if you've noticed yeah, this. Yeah, there's a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, which is a bit of a wild change because I'm like, I used to always, I used to always look at, uh, <laughs> used to always see things of like, it was always like Russia. Obviously, they're not very popular at the moment. Um, yeah. But you used to always see these things of like outdoor, literally full outdoor gyms that were just like yeah. fixed machines that were all like chained to each other and stuff so no one could nick yeah. them for the metal and like bolt it in and stuff but you'd always see like all these old folk and like young guys just like, racking out like work on these machines in russian like playgrounds yeah. essentially i was like there, that's dope there's one just uh on the canal um near me and like especially closer to covid lockdown and stuff you'd see tons of people just fucking doing pull-ups and tons of stuff on him yeah i saw one i went walking around softed park the other day um just to get some steps in in between some clients because i had some downtime and there was like yeah, yeah there's like a bunch of stuff like there's easily some bars for doing pull-ups and stuff hmm. obviously yeah, if, unless you have a kid like <laughs> jumping into a kid's playground to rack out chins is like you know maybe, maybe a bit of a social faux pas uh, yeah the um although it is definitely how you assert dominance on the playground so you know fair enough yeah uh <laughs> So if you're extremely budget concerned, there are definitely ways to get by yep. with no equipment or extremely minimal equipment like skipping ropes. You can do a whole heap. I think the first bit of exercise equipment I ever bought was a 24 kilo kettlebell. Yeah. For doing the absolute classic from Mr. Dan John, the 10,000 kettlebell swings workout. Which is not in the same workout for anyone who's like, oh my god, how the fuck, like, it's, uh, I've only ever done it, I think I've done it, like, two to three times in my career, like, in my life. Yeah, it's pretty savage. Oh, it's extremely savage. Yeah, here we go, I knew I had it, I have it noted down, I literally still have it noted down in my phone. (laughs) So yeah, the program is you essentially do a set of 10, a set of 15, a set of 25, and a set of 50 swings. 
yeah. with break with breaks in between, and you do that five times total, which gives you five hundred total reps. And you do that twenty times over a month if you're doing five days a week, or you extend it yeah. and do four days a week. I believe the recommendation is that you do two days on, one day off, and repeat until you hit 20 workouts, which 20 times 500, 10,000. Yep. Uh, and yeah, you can mix it up. You can put stuff in the middle. I've done it where you do, um, like I've done it where I've done like chins and dips in between each set just to break it up a bit and keep get some upper body lifts in there and stuff. And yeah, it's brutal. Yeah, and that and a twenty four kilo kettlebell oh, off the top of my head is like forty quid. Mm, I don't know about that anymore, quid. but at the time it was. Yeah. Now it's yeah, now it's definitely gone up. Like some of these are like fucking fifty quid. Although good old power cut co powder coated cast iron actually about forty quid. That's yeah. all you need. You just need something that looks like a cannonball with a handle stuck on it. Like that's all you need. Yeah, and again, realistically, if you want to be really frugal, there's video guides on YouTube of how to like cast your own out of concrete and rebar if you really want to. Yeah, which you could get for probably less than forty quid, but not much. Um, one way you can definitely do this, uh, without a kettlebell, this exact kind of program. Not that I'm a specific Dan John advocate. It is a, an incredibly over specific program that is like. If it's the only thing you're doing and you're just like, I would like something completely random and very difficult to do for a month. Yeah. This'll do it. Uh, is to use a sandbag, which is another segue into uh, the other next bit of gym equipment that is extremely frugal in, in these days and ages. Uh, I put up a guide on how to make one in COVID because, again, I feel like not a lot of people know about them, and they are extremely versatile tools and very cheap to make. Yeah. You essentially buy yourself a, like a military duffel bag or something. The shittier and more olive cover colored it looks, the better. Like, don't get one with loads of pockets and fancy zips and all this stuff. Like, you don't want a Bergen. You want, like, something that just looks like uh like those sacks like the hamburglar on the mcdonald's adverts used to use like just an unremarkable hessian or olive sack <laughs> and you then grab one of those i think the most i've spent on one was about 15 pounds yeah. uh, including delivery you can get them from like highland military supplies if you're in the uk um, they'll have them in other places. You can go to military surplus stores and get them, like Leith Army Store and Leith Walk. They'll probably have them for cheap. Um, go down to your local home renovation supplier, home base, B&Q, Wix, whatever you want, and find uh, pea gravel. Don't get sand, because sand's at a premium now for some fucking reason. Um, you can get pea gravel, which is just like the stones you chuck on a driveway or in flower beds or whatever you want. Um... And again, I think they cost, like, I think I ended up buying, they're, like, single-digit pounds on the kilo. Like, it's really not that difficult. Um, let me just check whilst I am on here. But you essentially get uh, so it's, like, four quid for 25, or for 20 kg of pea gravel. Yeah. Which is probably the best weight to pound ratio that you're going to get pound for pound undefeated um world champ world champ doesn't work in freedom units sorry um yeah get those um get some kind of waterproof lining like a dog food bag is why i use like an old dog food bag chuck the pea gravel in the bag chuck those bags like weigh each individual bag so what i would usually do is put each 25 or 20 kg pea gravel in a waterproof lining chuck it on the scale so i roughly knew that it was 20 and then duct tape one end of the dog food bag and cable tidy it shut and just like duct tape it up a bunch because helps it gives it a bit of structure helps keep it 
not gonna like rip itself out of the bag and then chuck it inside the burlap sack or the hessian sack or the fucking whatever you have and then repeat until desired weight is reached if you just want a 20 kg one um cool you're gonna end up with a lot of loose material on the sandbag but it's not a bad thing and whenever you're done you just cable tidy and duct tape the end of the sack like the duffel bag shut and that is your impromptu sandbag it is awkward af to lift and that's kind of the point like the amount of additional stability work that you get in from having to try and not let that thing fall out of your grip because all of the pea gravel just wants to like move where your hands are not <laughs> is really awkward and yeah it's a super affordable bit of kit that you can increase the weight of essentially until it doesn't fit in the bag anymore which will take it like well into like the 100 plus kg mark which for most things is going to do you really good like that was what i was talking about over lockdown was like if you just load one of these up like if you're new and load it up to like 60 kegs that's all you could ever want for lower body stuff and if you've got one that's kind of 30 to 40 again just assuming you are a guy that lifts weights you start hitting that and then just add 10 kg every like three to four weeks to the bag and just repeat your routine that's that will keep you real strong for quite a while before you get used to it too much yeah um in terms of other home gym equipment assuming people have a bit of money to spend like if they actually want like a home gym home gym like what would be your first purchase a bar and weights yeah barbell and weights like first is um, because if you just get a rack with no bar it's kind of you know yeah a I, sad. yeah it's, it, it rapidly if you're wanting an actual home gym home gym that you can like train hard at um the m amount of money you needed obviously significantly jumps up but mm. i would probably the, i'd say one of the best gym budget gym equipment places now is my refit just go in there squat rack bar plates collars done you you can literally train anything you want to with those three like yep. i'd say one thing because it's like one like unit as it were but like those three things as it were bar oh plates, yeah what, once once you get those things like your oh. strength you, your strength training needs assuming you get enough plates are pretty much met forever like and that yeah. thing will last like if your um, house ever burns down the squat rack will still be there for you to squat in so yeah and yeah it's just um yeah you're limited by your creativity on like how you train things as it were um, yeah and if you want to chuck like a wooden platform under it all that's only a couple hundred quid extra we even have a video on how to make one hit, hit. Well, you do um so but yeah like, video think... by a long way oh a very long way um yeah so i'd say if you're jumping into that yeah marifit's probably the best way to go and Squat racks are unbelievably indestructible. Like the only reason we quote unquote got rid of our old ones is because, well, we had the money to invest in new ones. Um, and we obviously abuse ours by them being in an actual gym with people with more than just us, like me and you lifting weights. Whereas like if it's a home gym for just like say you and one or two of your mates to train in, it'll last forever. Oh yeah, and I mean we rehomed the other ones. Like they're still the old ones yeah. are still being used by people in in their garages. We just yeah. gave them to them because they're we were a bit like jank for... yeah, they were they were getting a bit beat up, and we were like we have the facilities to yeah. so we should probably do it. Uh, and yeah, that would be our recommendations for home gym equipments at three different price points of as close to zero as physically possible. Just do calisthenics and find some stuff outside, like. Uh, boats and logs. Bo boats and logs. <laughs> yeah. Um, that kind of stuff. Um, then in the middle, sandbag stuff. Completely uh, amazingly versatile. You could build one. You could get like a 60, 70 kilo sandbag made for under under 35 pounds, I, I would be bold enough to say. Like, I'm yeah. pretty sure my one that I built in lockdown, I built two. And the most expensive part of it was the burlap sack <laughs> that yeah. I bought to put them all in. Like, singularly oh. expensive. Um, You can get up there in terms of you buy pea gravel. Again, find anything loose and heavy if you have, like... You don't need to buy pea gravel either. Like, sometimes they're just big fucking heaps of it kicking about places. Like, 
places where people are like putting in roads and or I say put roads, but like I've always seen them up in Christophan Hill. If you've got a neighbor you don't particularly like that has loads on their driveway, just steal theirs. Um, just don't tell them. Yeah. Uh, and then at the upper end of budget, if you're like, no, I actually want like a gym I can train in with lifting, like with barbells and stuff. What should I get first? Rack, bar, plates, collars, and a bench. <clears throat> yeah. Mirror fit, probably your best option. Or second hand, but maybe not. Yeah. I just would say, yeah, like that's the biggest um, like company that does high yeah. quality, cost effective gym. And yeah, that's it from us this week. Peace. <laughs>